Let's learn how to use cameras, layers, and render targets to have multiple post effects applied separately to different images in your lens. Okay, so before we get into Lens Studio, uh, you have Professor Mike here with a little overview of how cameras, layers, and render targets work in Lens Studio. So let's start with a very basic flow. So when you start a new project, uh, Lens Studio will automatically create a camera for you. And then anything you add to your scene is going to go into a default layer. So everything in the objects panel, so the cameras, 3D objects, text, images, everything is going to be on some layer. Now this is already created by default for you. So you have your camera, it's looking at everything on the layer assigned to it, is going to output all of that to a render target. Um, so it's just gonna be figuring out how to draw everything. And then that render target will be displayed to the end user and that's the final snap. So this is pretty basic. You open new project, you add things to your scene, and then it just all gets output to the screen. Pretty simple. Uh, so let's make it a little more complex with, say, an image overlay. Uh, let's say you have some grain that you want to add to your lens. So once again, we have our default camera. We add our 3D objects, our face retouch, whatever we want to the scene. And that is output to our render target. But then we create a screen image for our grain, and that will create an orthographic camera. So we get a second camera, and then that has its own orthographic layer. Uh, so I'm using different colors here. So in blue, we have our default camera, the default layer, and then in green, we have the orthographic counterparts. So after our default camera is drawn everything to the render target, our orthographic camera does everything and also draws that to the render target. And then that's displayed to the end user. So still nothing horribly complex, but now we have two different cameras, two different layers, um, but still just one render target. But the cool thing about this is we can actually create our own render targets. Now, Lens Studio, the new projects always have a default render target. You can create your own. Uh, so why would you want to do that? So we are going to start with our default camera again, add our effects. But now we're going to output that to a custom render target, and not the original one. And then in a very simple example, um, we can actually create an orthographic camera and then just display our render target as a screen image. Uh, every render target in Lens Studio is an image texture, and you can display that as an image in your lens. So now we're taking our effects, putting them on their own render target, displaying that as an image in our orthographic camera. That goes to another render target that's then displayed on the screen. Uh, so this example, the end result is pretty much the same as the last one. Uh, so let's make it a little more interesting. Now we're going to have uh, a camera with a single effect going to a render target. Then we have a new camera, a new layer, and a new render target. We'll create our orthographic camera with some screen images. And now we can take each of our render targets and display them as separate images. Now by doing this, we can have two distinct effects. So we could have, say, some 3D decoration. We could have a color correction. We could have face retouch. We could have whatever. But now, because we have different render targets, we can display them side by side, or we can kind of scale and layer them on top of each other, and then output all that together to the screen. So uh, school's not in session anymore. Who wants to go back to school? Let's get out of PowerPoint and back into Lens Studio and see how we can actually make this happen. Okay, so I'm here in Lens Studio, and let's go ahead and get started. So I just have a new project here, and if I select my camera, so this is that default camera I mentioned before, we select it, we can see we have a layers input here and a render target here. So this is all created by default. Um, there's a good chance you've never had to touch any of this before uh, because you can do quite a lot in Lens Studio without ever having to touch cameras or layers, um, or I should say render targets and layers. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to change that. So you might notice we also have these little circles by everything. This is going to show you what layer something is on visually. Uh, so here we have the default layer. We can't change anything about this layer. Uh, we can't change the name or anything. But we can add new layers. So you can click on the little circle to change the color, and you can edit the name. I'm just going to delete this. Uh, we'll come back to the layers in just a minute. Now the render targets we just create here in the resources panel. So if we were to create a new render target, uh, we can now have our camera 
output to that one instead. Um, and then in our scene config, we can choose which render target we are displaying. So the capture target is what is actually being recorded in the snap. The live target is what is displayed. Now, the reason these are different is you might have like a user interface with buttons or sliders. You might want to show those in the live target, but not include them in the capture target. I'm not going to go over how to do that in this tutorial, um, but I have a few others where I go over how to create sliders and stuff, um, and we do do that. Now, this overlay target, this is for Snapchat's new Spectacles version 4. Um, we don't care about this right now, so you can just ignore that. And then the last area that's pretty important is this render order. If you have multiple render targets, you can choose which ones are drawn to first, and we'll also be coming back to this once we start creating ours. So that's just kind of a brief overview of how the cameras, layers, and render targets work. Uh, so let's create some of our own to actually see how this all works. All right, so let's uh, start off by creating a new camera. Uh, so in this effect, I want to have kind of that blurred black and white background visible on the edges, and then I'll have a separate uh, scene. It'll also be the camera view with some different post effects, maybe a color correction, uh, and then scale down a little bit so you can see that black and white blurred part in the back. So I need a camera for the black and white background, a camera for the overlaid effect, and then a third camera to kind of bring it all together. Uh, but we're gonna go through one by one. So I have my new camera. I'm going to rename this to black and white cam. I'm gonna come over here. Now I'm going to add a new layer. So I'm going to rename this black and white layer. I'm gonna go ahead and click the circle. I wanna give it a different color just to kind of keep track of things better. And then I'm going to click on it so I get the check mark. Now you can see a camera can uh, look at multiple layers at the same time. Uh, I just wanna keep one layer per camera per render target. Uh, so we'll just set this to the black and white layer and we're good. So we can see that here. You can see we have that little black uh, circle icon here. So we know which layer it's on. Now, we need to give it a new render target. So we already created this one. So let's just rename this to black and white render target. I'll select my camera. We'll have an output to that render target. All right, so nothing too complicated. We create a camera, give a new layer, give a new render target. Now let's start creating that effect. So I'm just gonna stick with the built-in effects for this tutorial. Uh, so let's add a Gauss blur post effect. And I also want to add a color correction, black and white. Now you might notice both of those were added to this default camera. And as you're creating different cameras, uh, Lens Studio doesn't really know what to add things to. So it's usually going to default to this default camera, um, whatever camera's on the default layer. So I want to control where these effects are showing up. So I'm just going to actually click this effect scene object, drag it into my camera. And now I'll select them and I'll also move them to that black and white layer. I'll select all those. Now you might see everything's disappearing in the preview panel. Uh, we could see them before because they're added to the default camera. But now they're all being output to that black and white render target. So if I want to actually see what's going on and adjust it, I'll come to the scene config. I'll change my live target to the black and white render target. And now I can make my adjustments. Now we're going to switch this back to the render target uh, when we finish the lens, when we submit. But as far as kind of setting things up, we're gonna be changing the live target quite a bit uh, just to check each separate render target that we're creating. Uh, so let's come over to our resources. I'm just gonna bring this blur strength down a bit. Still keep it fairly blurry. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse that so it's not in our way. And um, one thing I forgot to mention in the scene config, you see this render order. So essentially the original render target is being drawn first and then our black and white render target. So that doesn't matter right now, but since we're going to use this render target as the input to a screen image, I want to click on these three arrows and drag it up. So it comes first. And now the order in here sometimes is a little finicky and it doesn't want to change. Might take a couple tries, 
Um, now, usually this render order is not going to matter too much, but if things are out of order, you might get a black or white flash when the lens first turns on, because if you're trying to use a render target and it hasn't been drawn to yet, there's going to be no, no data there. Uh, so I like to keep my final render target at the bottom of this list. In this case, I'll be the original render target. All right, so we have our first uh, camera in effect created. Let's go ahead and create a new one. Now, I could actually use this default camera as um, one of my cameras, but um, I'm creating my own just to kind of go through the whole process a few times. So I want to name it overlay cam uh, just to kind of keep things organized. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll take it off the default layer, put on just this layer, this overlay, and we'll just keep the color as yellow and we don't need to change that. I also need to create another render target. We'll rename this overlay. Now let's select my camera. And I'll have this camera output to the overlay render target. If I come to the scene config, I'll switch my live target to the overlay target. And now I can start building this effect. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Let's add just a color correction. Let's add the analog TV. Now, once again, you're you'll see that these are being added to the default camera. I do wish Lens Studio would add this stuff to whichever camera you have selected. It's easy enough to fix. So you just select uh, your element, switch it to the correct layer. Uh, now this is a manual step you have to do. So if things aren't showing up, do double check all your layers. Uh, so you can see over here, we have our effect. Um, let's just drag this up before the other render target. I'm just going to adjust this analog TV. I don't want the distortion. Kind of take these. I'll dial these back a little bit. Okay, so we have two separate effects. So we have our overlay effect. We have this black and white effect. Now let's layer everything together. So I'm going to come up here. I will create a screen image. Now. That will create a new orthographic camera for us. An orthographic camera is for displaying two-dimensional elements, uh, just images. This is a two-dimensional image. It's not going to rotate in 3D space. So that's why it's called orthographic camera. You can see it has its own layer, orthographic. This was created automatically. And if we select the camera, you can see it's outputting to our original render target. Now, I haven't touched that. Um, because we're just going to use this as our final output. Uh, but really, you can use any render target you want as your final output. Uh, so let's change our live target to our render target. Now we can create our scene. I'm going to duplicate this. I'll have a black and white image. And then I'll have my overlay image. Now all I have to do is... Uh, select my render targets as a texture because as all a render target is, is just a texture. I can grab my overlay. You can see it show up. Black and white one, I can grab that. Now, if I scale this overlay down, you can see my other render target is right behind it with its own effects. So let's just scale that, kind of position it. Um, one thing I like to do with kind of the bottom one, so technically fit will work because the render target's the same size as the screen. I'm a little paranoid, so I switch that to stretch just to make sure that it is always going to go and fill the entire screen so we don't get any like weird bands from the camera texture showing through. Um, that's just something I do. I'm a little too paranoid when it comes to that. Okay, uh, so that is it now. Um, we can actually delete this default camera since we didn't use it and we don't need this lighting. We don't have any 3D objects. So we can just clean up our scene a bit. And so you see we have our different cameras outputting different render targets and then putting them all together in this orthographic camera. Uh, now that we have it here, we can actually come in here. We can adjust our different effects. So we could turn off the blur. 
back on. Um, we could come in here and add another color correction if we want. If we add this contrast one, you'll see Lens Studio is going to create yet another camera to go to the default layer. Um, it's a little annoying. All you have to do is just drag this up where you want it to go. Delete that camera. And then just put uh, your effect on the right layer. Now you've added this um, effect to just this camera without affecting anything else. So um, pretty simple steps. Uh, there's just a little tedious creating cameras, layers, render targets. But overall, pretty simple and a really nice, clean way to keep your effects isolated and allow you to layer different effects into the same lens.